Today I've got this Samsung Galaxy C7. It's got a bad charge port and the screen is broken. But the owner of the phone really just needs the data that's on there. It's a fairly uncommon phone where I'm from, so parts aren't readily available. So I need a way to remove the screen without breaking it. And it being an AMOLED display makes that somewhat challenging. But luckily I have the solution for that. As you might've seen in a previous video, I have a Samsung Automatic Okta disassembler, which will allow me to separate the display from this mid-frame, hopefully without damaging it. Let's get into the video. If you haven't checked out the video where I demonstrate this machine in progress and how to adjust the settings and things like that, be sure to do that. It's a Samsung Automatic OCTA Disassembler. Basically, it removes the backs and the fronts of, of Samsungs. And this right here, the only way into this device is through their front. So we're going to use this machine to remove the front. First thing that I'm going to do is adjust the settings. What I want to do is reduce the speed in which it disassembles or lifts the, lifts, lifts the display off. And I want to go down to the slowest setting possible. There we go. Once it's up to temperature, we'll go ahead and, sit and set the phone inside. The main reason for this repair is the charge port itself. You can see it's fairly mangled. These displays are really difficult to get off without damaging them. I'm going to clean up the, the glass so that the suction has a better chance of holding onto it. We'll open that up, stick the phone in, adjust it so that it fits. I'm going to tighten it down a little bit and we'll lower this down. I can now verify the location of the phone with the suction, which that looks good. I'll push the move button and it'll lower onto that. We'll hit vacuum and it'll pull down on it. And now we're going to do the screen. There we go. We now have a five minute countdown before the top will start to automatically lift the screen off. One of the things that I like to use in the assist of this is going to be this little flux bottle with some isopropyl alcohol in it. It's got that refined needle which allows me to go in there, put a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol down so that the adhesive wants to let go a little bit easier. Only 20 seconds left to go. Three, two, one. It's starting to lift here very slowly. You see the light here is on. All right, it's starting to lift very, very slowly. And I'm just basically flooding the inside with isopropyl alcohol. All right, and you can see, we can see all the way under there. I think it was successful. All right, let's hit stop. And I don't see any bleeding in the display, so I think it didn't damage it. We have the side buttons here wanting to hold on. I'll gently pry those away. There we go. The copper backing did kind of bubble up, but that is a, a piece that does come off and is replaceable. So I don't think we've damaged the display. I'll go ahead and loosen this up. We can take the phone out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this clip here. You can disconnect the display, save the earpiece there. Go ahead and remove all of the screws. All right, now I can disconnect the home button. And we'll gently peel that back. I'm gonna push that down and forward and that'll allow that to slide out. Now I can remove these screws. You know, I've got all the screws out. I'm just gonna use my fingernail here. I probably should remove the SIM card tray. And there we go. There are two black screws that hold down the main logic board. And there are two coax cables. Go to the charging port daughter board. Carefully remove the motherboard. This reminds me so much of all the other Samsungs. Now I can remove the charging port assembly. Just like that. Now I just need to get a new charging port to solder onto the daughter board. This looks like the same style charge port that's on most of the Samsung, like S6, Note, those ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and desolder that. And 
add some flux. And add some solder. You kind of now see how mangled that charge for it was. All right, let's add some more flux. Some wick, and with our soldering iron, we will suck up all of the solder. Add a little bit of solder paste. Quick cleaning, add some flux. And what I like to do is add some high melt point solder paste to the legs. This is a lead free solder paste. Make sure we got a really good strong hold on that charge board. All right, now that I've actually fixed it, go ahead and stick back in the charge port. We'll add back the coax cable here. We'll connect the board again, gently set in the rest, and I'll put back two black screws. Reconnect the coax cables. Make sure they sit in their little grooves there. And reconnect the battery. And now install it back into the frame. And we'll put back the screws, put back the home button, reconnect it. Make sure it clicks. Slide the SIM and S tray back in. Protect that home button connector. All right, I've got every screw back in place in the earpiece bracket as well. Now the only piece of adhesive for the display that kind of stayed behind was a little bit right there. And the rest of this e adhesive is pretty, pretty sticky, so I might be able to reuse it. But let's, uh, let's connect the display and test things first. All right, we'll put back the bracket for the first time. Let's test it. Oh, okay. I was getting worried there for a second. I guess the battery was really dead, but yeah, I'll charge up and I'll show you when it's working. All right. So as you can see, we're actually starting to charge now. Let's go ahead and try to power it on. Apart from the crack, the rest of the display is in pretty good shape. Must have had a screen protector on it because I don't see a single scratch other than the crack on the edge. And it's coming on. There we go. Touch works. Everything looks good. All right. And there you go. All fixed. Now they can get their data and they can even continue to use it as a phone because using that machine, I was able to successfully remove the screen without damaging it, even though it was already cracked. And it did it in such a way that I could actually reuse the adhesive. I put it back on there with the original adhesive that it came with and it stuck really good. Um, it has no lifting. I put it through the tests, pulling on it with the suction cup, for example, stayed on. So I'm thoroughly impressed and will continue to be impressed by this machine. I'll have a link for it in the description. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.